what you're doing, Charles. The motion now, you're rocking back and forth so much, it's kind of, uh, there's no impact to it anymore. So what you gotta do is, you gotta come up and then wham, like put your shoulders back for the look. Try it. Now you come up. That's it. Okay, what you gotta do, you gotta hit that as a punctuated uh, moment. So you Okay, go. No, but see, there's no. It doesn't look like you recognize. You don't see anything. You've got to react. Here we are. How many years later? Does it 13 years? 13, 14 Thir years later. Actually, almost to the day. Started 14 years this time of the year. Well, it's introductions. I'm yeah. Stephen Kyoto. Uh, I'm Edward Kyoto. And I'm Charlie Kyoto. So you can blame us. <laughs> Everything in that movie, you can point to these three guys and say they're responsible. Yeah, there's a lot of Kyotos. That, that name was on there a lot. It was kind of funny. That was a big laugh for us. Well, the first stroke of the film, if you look at the credits, or was it? Uh, uh, or produced by pr the producer credit. Charles Kyoto, Edward Kyoto, Stephen Kyoto. Especially if you mispronounce film. it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was a, uh, a labor of love for us because um, even before we got into production, we'd been thinking about this idea for, for many years. Mm. You know, started just conversations about, you know, what's the scariest thing you could think of driving along a dark road. And it was uh, if you looked next to you and saw a clown peering at you from another car. Oh, no! Come on, Joe! Get going! Actually, the original opening, as it was written in the original screenplay, uh, we had a teaser uh, that, that started the film, and it was our first clown kill. Uh, but because of some of the technical difficulties we had in shooting up north in Santa Cruz, uh, the sequence technically wasn't good enough to open the film. <laughs> Mark, 
the marker. Action. A little more violent. Okay, get her. You don't like it? Get out and walk. Go ahead, get out of here. I don't want to drive around with a drunken bum like you anyway. A little bit more violent, a little bit of a fight. More violent now. Okay, give it to her. This is bullshit. You don't like it? Get out and walk. Go ahead, get out of here. I don't want to drive around with a drunken bum like you anyway. Good. Dale Mark. Damn it. Don't come, don't come. Dale, Dale. You don't like it? Get out and walk! God damn it. Good. Marker. And. Action. You don't like it? Get out and walk! Go ahead, get out of here! I don't want to drive around with a drunken bum like you anyway! God damn it. That's a good Yeah, one. okay. We really wanted it in the movie, so. We were on a very tight schedule. We had to shoot the film in 36 days. We were not going to get any more days to shoot this movie. So in order, the only way to shoot it again was to open up time in the schedule. And so Stephen just um, got his plan where he just started accelerating other scenes to buy us time, another half a night, to get to shoot the clown car again. And then the <laughs> second time we shot it, they chose this little park area where the road was so rocky and so bumpy that all the shots were jumbling up and down. Another unusable day's worth of shooting. But the lighting was okay. <laughs> yeah, the lighting was better. So now you can see how shaky the camera was. So we had so, two badly shot nights of sequence uh, of the sequence there and the executive producer, the director, Edward, they said, forget this, it doesn't work, let's get rid of it, throw it out. And I went in there and I saw it, I said, no, this is the whole conception, this is the, the initial concept of the whole freaking film you know, there's got to be something here we can use. So I go in there, I went with the editor, I, said, I sat down with him, I said, you know, let's make this thing work. And I said, this shot is good, this shot is good, that's good, this car, this close-up, this close-up. And I took everything that wasn't crappy. And <laughs> then lot. I made a montage. <laughs> I put together with Chris, uh, Chris Roth, I put together a sequence. It's an abbreviated sequence from the original plan, but at least it's in, it, it's in there. And there were two cuts. <laughs> yeah. um, Two stop mo uh, was it one stop motion or two stop motion it's cuts? Two stop there motion cuts. That we did with Fantasy Two and, and Gene Warren, where we did we went to the traditional thing. We made a small little five inch clown puppet, put it on a rig, and uh, uh, photographed it frame by frame in front of uh, a, a rear screen uh, projection. Yeah, we actually went up to uh, Griffith Park. We shot a plate of the car swerving off the road, and then Gene later did a, a, sh a composite shot. Of knocking the clown, knocking the car off That's the road, right. uh, knocking the car off the road, which is, this, this whole <laughs> sequence was a real nightmare because yeah. we can talk about the car, the live car going off the cliff. That was a whole other <laughs> fiasco. <laughs> well, it, it was supposed to go flying off the cliff, and we have the, the the behind the scenes footage there. Everyone's yelling, "Get back! All right, get out of there! Run! Get away! A hundred yards away! If you yeah. had to go back farther, farther, because they didn't want this car to be careening onto the crowd, onto the, on top of the crew, and kill us all." The car went mm, you see like it. a runny nose. You it just it. dribbled over the cliff. You see it in the film. It's yeah. kind of unimpressive. Uneventful. <laughs> and what happened in the end, I it's think, uh, to stop the car from rolling down the hill, it was on. They put a sandbag underneath the front wheel. And they neglected to take the sandbag away when they had the cable pull the car. So the cable snapped immediately. So the car just kind of rolled down the hill via gravity. And Actually, just, if it yeah. weren't for the hill, it wouldn't have gone anywhere, which... Yeah. <laughs> Which would have been better. <laughs> We've got no, a second take, maybe. It's just one of those crazy things that happens in production, and we laugh about it now. Grant that one cue. Oh, oh, right. Up there. Try to catch it, folks. Roll the other cameras. Okay. 
action. Get out of there! Ready? Out! And action! Table drop. No! some technical aspects like uh, when the clowns uh, were shot in the nose we had this tornado effect that the clowns nose would burst and they'd rotate around and around and around and explode in a burst of confetti uh, one of the gags we used in the photography of that scene was a, a uh, reactive light rig uh, as the clowns are twirling Gene Warren in Fantasy 2 comped a tornado on top of the clown but we wanted some reactive light sparkling all over the walls as he was spinning. We had this cylinder of cracked mirrors pointing in every direction, like a mirror, disco mirrored ball, and we rotated that with all these green lights shining into it. So we had this, like this uh, cascade of these reflected lights beaming all over the room, and that was the reactive light that was then used as a background plate for this tornado effect that Gene uh, comped on top. Cocoon gag is another one, uh, the cocoon gun. We well, that's a, a fun, yeah. That. Um, we'll show you, you know, the cocoon magically appears when the gun is uh, uh, fired at the uh, hapless victim. But uh, you'll see that um, the actor has to get out of there, and uh, he is replaced by a pink cotton candy cocoon. And you'll see how seamlessly and flawlessly we made <laughs> the switch. Well, yeah, it's pretty, not that it's low-tech stuff, but it's just very basic special effects techniques that we use throughout the whole film. Uh, the same thing with Debbie being uh, 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 blasted inside the balloon. We have the background plate for that as well. The beginning of the take is where Debbie's standing there or sitting there on the couch, and the clowns blast her with their ray gun. We have a reactive light glowing her yellow. And then in the same take, we have her walking out, and we have one of the effects guys bringing in a balloon. And what Gene did as an optical, he kind of cut out the middle and cross-dissolved between Debbie and the balloon with some kind of optical effect on top. It's really more the characters, you know, from the, yeah. Mike Tobacco, the Terenzi brothers, Joe Lombardo. These are all people we grew up with. Um, so the cast of characters really are people that we knew. I mean, Terenzi brothers are, are very good friends of mine, and we always had fun adventures with them doing stupid things as kids. And Mike Tobacco was always a ladies' man as well. So we took those, I guess, icons for us and just put them in essentially the blob, Jack Harris's The Blob film, in that kind of script. Kids trying to communicate to the authorities that there is monsters with our, our friends as the main characters. We barely got away! Killer clowns from outer space. Holy shit. Well, son. I think you made a big mistake. You're in movies, Terry. For me?
then I guess we threw in all our uh, our favorite monster films and science fiction films as references, uh, like The Power Chamber is a direct reference to uh, the Krell Chamber in The Forbidden Planet. And uh, well, I believe I, I believe yeah, that's what a lot of filmmakers do. There's certain things that they grew up watching, motion pictures and television, that stuck with them. And I would say it's an homage, you know, uh, we're, we're basically bringing it back with just a slight little just twist. Uh, you know, the Ray Harryhausen, Willis O'Brien, you know, uh, uh, scenes. Um, there was, you know. Well, somebody had asked me if uh, the cocoons were reminiscent of the pods in Invasion of the Body Snatchers, uh, pulling, pulling the cotton candy away and seeing that face underneath well, yeah. it. Uh, I don't remember specifically yeah, no. being that reference, but you know, must, I love that you film. Know, it it yeah. must have been consciously. I don't think we did it, but it's uh, imagery is certainly ingrained in our, our vocabulary. It was our first film. We, we had done effects for a lot of people a lot of years here. And the only way we were able to make this movie was really working with, the, calling in a lot of favors and a lot of friends. I mean, Dwight Roberts, who, who designed and built all the clown animatronics, um, a long-term long -term associate with us. And, you know, he basically, you know, gave blood and sweat to make the clowns come alive. Gene and Leslie over Fantasy Two really could not make the film without them. Can we speed that up, please? Okay, here we go. Ready? Rehearsal. And... Action. Action. Well, we're, we're going to be rich. Come on, who? Who? <laughs> who? All right, can we Listen, wrangle that who? Dog if over you there? you want to go to 21, you better come along with me. <laughs> <laughs> be eating that damn jack in the box for the rest. Action. This is our lucky day. But you're going in the wrong direction if you want to get something to eat, because I've got it. Yeah, we're going to be rich, girl. This is our lucky day. But you're going in the wrong direction if you want to get something to eat, because I've got it. seen one that looked like this. Hmm. The business of clowns has been clouded for the past several years, but now with uh, MGM stepping up, uh, there's a little more uh, direction, and so we're hopeful that maybe uh, with the success of uh, the re-release here that we'll be able to uh, really do everything we thought we could do with the film. We always saw this as a franchise. By now we should be up to Killer Clowns 9 or 10, you know. It's, uh, it's really rich in that sort of uh, the clown motifs, the circus motifs, the, you know, the merchandising possibilities. And, you know, there's so many things that we, we left out in the first movie that we want to do. And there's just so many things that are still unmined in terms of clown antics. You know, it's really fun. I don't know where the, the bug came from, except we grew up in, in New York uh, watching Million Dollar Movie, which was running King Kong, Mighty Joe Young, Godzilla's, you know, the, and Rodan, all the Japanese movies. Oh, yeah, and living in the Bronx, in, 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 in close, close proximity to Manhattan, when we saw King Kong, he was like walking around in our neighborhood. And in fact, we went to the Empire State Building to see the spot where he, yeah. uh, the Kraken of Cement Looking that he made when he landed. So mom and dad were always supportive. You know, dad took us to the monster movies and the matinees and stuff, you know. <laughs> so when we were older, we got a, a, a camera, a Super 8 camera. Actually, it was an 8 millimeter camera. And yeah. we started recreating those famous films that we saw when we were young. We did stop motion. We did puppets. And we started making films in the basement. Yeah, I don't think they really understood what the drive was to tell stories, create images. They, but they were, they were supportive. But they always, you know, in the back of their mind, well, learn computers, learn electronics, have something to fall back on. But they never discouraged us. I mean, they, they bought us the cameras, they bought us the film, got us things processed. You know, so they uh, very supportive in that manner. Yeah, I went to, uh, you know, I went to an art school. Stephen went to a film school. Edward went to, you know, uh, many schools. Many schools. Yeah. <laughs> About, you know, to study, you know, the. Uh, uh, the entertainment, technical. 
you know, performance aspects. So, um, you know, there was always supporting, but they always wanted us to, you know, possibly take the civil service exam so we'd have something to fall back on. Yeah, yeah but it was, it was always art. What we were creating was stories, but art. Charlie was an illustrator, I was a sculptor, and Ed got involved with more of the engineering and mechanics. And everything we've done in, in our careers, both in filmmaking and both as effects uh, supervisors, we, uh, we just throw tons of art. It's sculpting, it's painting, it's, it's uh, sewing and welding. It's all these arts and crafts thrown together. And yeah. the best thing is making a film, utilizing all of that art. You know, even today, I still don't think they really understand what we do, but we seem to be doing okay. <laughs> I mean, was it important that, that we have to make people movies? No, we like the monsters. You know, we wanted to make a monster movie. Anymore, you see that feet. Okay, good. Does that, does that move better for you? Before we get you can do it fast. Okay, yeah. gentlemen. Come on. Okay. What are we doing? All right. That's it, guys. Thank you very much. Thanks for good work. That's a wrap.